It's time now for a look at the day's business news uh, with Brian Quinn. Uh, good morning, Brian. Good morning. You're starting out with the German auto giant Volkswagen uh, as it prepares to face its largest legal claim in modern German, his German rather, history. Well, Dawn, the Dieselgate scandal continues to resonate for the world's largest automaker with over 400,000 German car owners taking part in a collective lawsuit against VW. Starting in 2015, Volkswagen was found to have installed emissions test cheating software in millions of cars, cars worldwide. The scandal has already cost the company over 30 billion euros in fines and settlements. Preliminary hearings in the lawsuit set to begin Monday in the city of Brunswick. The case is expected to take years to wind through the courts. It is the first instance of Germany's new DMA legal action introduced in the wake of Dieselgate to help consumers get compensation for corporate misdeeds. VW's lawyers say the scale of the suit means a settlement is impossible. Here they are. A settlement is unimaginable because today is still completely open. We do not know who will appear in court and with what possible request. Negotiating agreements with so many unknown factors is not feasible. Next, some new economic data out of China shows factory activity for September coming in better than expected. That news, a rare bright spot for the Chinese economy amid an ongoing slowdown. Friday saw Washington threaten to delist Chinese companies from U.S. stock exchanges as the Trump administration seeks to limit U.S. investment in China. That new move is complicating plans for high-level negotiations next week as Beijing and Washington seek an end to their bruising trade war. China's Commerce Ministry on Sunday sounded an optimistic note all the same. Take a listen. We expect that in the 13th round of consultations, both China and the U.S. can work together on the basis of equality and mutual respect and can accommodate each other's concerns, resolve differences through consultation in a calm and rational manner, and find mutually beneficial solutions. We think this will benefit the people of both countries and the world at large. Optimistic factory data and aggressive potential investment curves. Asian markets a bit discombobulated Monday. The Nikkei in Tokyo down around eight tenths of a percent as SoftBank shares continue to sink there amid ongoing uncertainty around the botched IPO of key investment WeWork. Hong Kong's Hang Seng gaining half a percent as Anheuser-Busch InBev shares rose nearly seven percent in their trading debut there. Shares on the Chinese mainland slipping though with the Shanghai Composite off nearly a quarter percent. Shang, uh, the Kospi, rather, in Seoul is up just around two-thirds of a percent ahead of the closing bell there. Well, next, watch out Bordeaux. Here comes Sweden. The Nordic country, typically known more for its aquavit than its Sauvignon Blanc, is in the midst of a wine production boom. As rising temperatures and longer summers have boosted the fortunes of vineyards in recent years. Wasim Cornet has the story. These are not the lush vineyards in the warm, temperate climate of the Bordeaux region in France. In fact, they are much farther north, right here near the city of Malmo, just over a thousand kilometers from the Arctic Circle. Thanks to rising temperatures, what would have been an impossible feat a couple of decades ago has become more commonplace in recent years, making Swedish wine. Nordic vineyards primarily produce white wine made from Solaris, a German hybrid grape, and it's a serious business. At the beginning, we were planting the vines by hand, but since then the work has changed significantly. We even have a tractor that comes to do the weeding. Maurice Afrakis began making wine in 2001. He produces around 20,000 bottles a year, but that's just a drop in the bucket worldwide. Only 100 hectares of land are used for vineyards in all of Sweden, compared to three quarters of a million in France. So in order to stand out, producers here pride themselves on the quality of the product. Sustainability, that's what we focus on the most. Everything is done by hand. We use no chemicals. We only use organically approved materials. Experts say it's the new types of grapes that are helping Scandinavian winemakers, not climate change. Longer summers and warmer temperatures, however, are leading to better harvests. Our next protests broke out across Lebanon on Sunday. 
this as frustrations grow over an economic and financial crisis. Demonstrators are demanding to live with dignity and are calling on the ruling class to stop raiding Lebanon's coffers. Hundreds in the streets of Beirut, protesting over increasingly difficult living conditions. As Lebanon's economic crisis takes a turn for the worse. The main reason we are protesting is living conditions. We are part of the people and we endure what the people endure. We are here to demand our rights like everyone else. It's time for us to take to the streets. Tensions flared at points between police and demonstrators, many of whom hold the government responsible for the country's economic woes. In recent weeks, the Lebanese pound has lost ground against the U.S. dollar, defying the official exchange rate, which remains fixed, and fueling concerns that dollar reserves may be running low. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Saeed Hariri declared what he called an economic emergency, just months after his government approved sweeping budget cuts. They're designed to tackle a public debt of $86 billion and a debt-to-GDP ratio of over 150% one of the highest in the world. Authorities are seeking to unlock $11 billion in pledged international investment. But donors say they want to see progress on reform before releasing the funds. And finally for business, a mortgage is considered underwater when the borrower owes more than the house is worth. But climate change is bringing a more literal interpretation to that term. A new report out Monday shows that major banks are well aware that homeowner debt is only getting riskier in coastal regions. But rather than stop lending, they're shifting those risks onto U.S. taxpayers by selling the mortgages to government-backed agencies Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Regulations prevent Fannie and Freddie from factoring in risks from natural disasters. The report suggests that a meltdown similar to the one that triggered the 2008 financial crisis could be repeated, but without the recovery as coastal real estate becomes unviable amidst climate change. Drano, privatizing profits, socializing costs, that's what we call capitalism. Seriously, indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that, Brian. Brian Quinn there with a look at the day's business news.